Hey everybody, I'm really excited today. We have a lot going for Make It Be Up. But first, I want to introduce someone that has inspired me um, to just create all the time, but um, just to test new barriers and new things. Um, his name is Josh, and I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself in regards to what you're doing now. All right, um, my name is Josh Blevins. I'm a natural native. Right now, at this moment, we are recrafting um, popular sneakers using luxury materials, uh, kind of pretty much breaking the shoe all the way down and uh, recreating it. Cool. So speaking of shoes, I had to start with this. So it looks good, everybody. Like, these are my Jordans probably from, I say, I think I got these maybe in college, but it could be high school. But unfortunately, they are broken. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> I just want y'all to see how crazy this looks, but this is something that I know that you're familiar with. So just tell us about your experience with crafting shoes, because before I remember just you telling me about um, construction with bags, making bags with leather goods, but then you went to Denver not too long ago, I believe it was. But tell us about that and what you learned and what school you went to. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I'm... Uh... My love of sneakers goes kind of back. Uh, I used to contract design for Converse in the early 2000s. Um, I went to a school called Bonnie and Wills, a school for shoemaking in Ashland, Oregon, where I learned how to make uh, men's dress shoes, wingtips, uh, Oxfords, things of that nature. And then um, I attempted to start my own sneaker line, uh, probably got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, then kind of went back into the recrafting, uh, Jordans, uh, Air Max Ones, just popular sneakers, uh, popular culture sneakers. So, um, I have, a, I have a background in bag making. I was, uh, I apprenticed for the head designer for Samsonite for three years. Um, I made, I know how to make purses, pretty much anything to do with leather crafting goods. And Josh, what started your love of, uh, designing? Cause that is designing and crafting. I think uh, I think my love for designing started uh, just wanting to be fresh. Like it was it was it was strictly selfish. It wasn't really I, I didn't design for other people for a lot of years. Uh, you actually had to know me to get anything that I made. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. And I, then I was, how I, did you how did you get into it? Because a lot of people, like just people that are listening, um, how would you tell them that you got into it as far as uh, those apprenticeships and different things? Uh, actually, I got into the apprenticeships, uh, the, the bag apprenticeships I got into by just pretty much bugging the guy, uh, by, um, by trade, I'm a pattern maker. I know how to make patterns for bags, shoes, whatnot. And I wanted, he, he's a master pattern maker. So I just kind of basically asked if I'm, if I could work for free and just learn how to make patterns. Um, uh, he was intrigued because he's in, he's not originally from Nashville, but in Nashville, there wasn't that many people that want to learn how to make bags. So he was intrigued by my, you know, my persistence to want to learn. So he, he took me under his wing. Uh, he actually owns a bag company here in Nashville called Tucker and Bloom. Cool. Cool. And then uh, I'll ask you this too. What were some of the challenges that you had in the beginning when you were crafting bags? Uh, honestly, the biggest challenge I've had, I think, in anything that I've crafted is just um, kind of like the lack of resources in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, they have, like, honestly, like if you want to buy leather, you're your only choices tandy leather really you know there's a couple small leather houses or places that you could probably order but we don't have any like real good leather houses or we don't have any good like tool like uh stores where you can go buy tools like i said tandy leather is is pretty much it now not saying anything bad about tandy because i'm actually working with them on some things but like it's just, it's just lack of resources has really hurt us yeah and then what about business wise what were some of the challenges there uh, my biggest uh, challenge in business is I'm not a very I'm not very good at social media. <laughs> so right now, social media is probably the most important part of getting your uh, your brand out there. And I'm I'm trying to learn. I'm very social in person, but not so much on online. Yeah, but you're 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 showing your designs more on there. And I guess tell us a little bit about what you had. What was that maybe two weeks ago? Yeah, tell us about um, that. 
Well, we did a pop-up shop. Uh, I have a new brand called Idiot Savant, which is a, a cut and sew company, basically cut and sew sneakers. And uh, we do we do some apparel, mostly like accessories. We're going to be doing cut and sew bucket hats, cut and sew five panel hats, uh, watch bands, just different kinds of cool stuff, uh, mostly sneaker related. But um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring more of a classy look back to streetwear, kind of like back in the day when uh, you had like Fat Farm and stuff like that. It was like a, a real clean streetwear look, kind yeah. of like a, a more of like a streetwear Ralph Lauren look. Cool. And who are some designers that inspire you? Designers that inspire me. Um, let me see. I'll be honest, that's, that's a funny question because I really don't follow a lot of designers because I'm the type of person, if I like what you do, I can be strongly influenced by that. And I try to keep my palate clean because yeah. it's easy for me to look at someone else's stuff and kind of involve it in the mind. And I'm, I'm a big advocate of like artists having their own like style and stuff. So. Ooh, and then I guess talk about a little bit about your construction wise because not too long ago you were making tables and different things are you still doing that yes i still i still do a little bit of woodwork uh we're finishing up a desk right now for rock nation headquarters in new york um trying to get back into that i've always had a love for sneakers so i've kind of been like just yeah. focusing on sneakers right now um i didn't think i was going to get back into it and so I, I've just kind of been going full force with that. But yeah, I, I still do some of the woodwork and metal work sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say, you've been going full force with it, like from going back and getting educated on just everything with the sneakers and constructing them, uh, the pop-up shop, and then like, what's next? Uh, the next move is, well, right now we're doing, like I said, custom Jordans. So we're trying to build uh, the brand. We're using familiarity. But the, the next move is honestly our own silhouettes, like where we're, we're creating like a bespoke feel. Uh, we have our own silhouette. You come in, you get your shoe, I mean, your foot measured. Um, you pick your materials. And we basically build our own designs with uh, like you custom make your own design. Cool. Yeah, and that's it. Then it looks like you have some fabrics behind you. Can you show us a little bit of your your uh, your workspace? Yeah, I can. So some of the fabrics I have back here. This is a southwestern suede. Uh, we've got with hold on. I guess let me see if I can tell you. Yeah, this is a southwestern suede that we uh, we built a rapport with this company in Italy, Opera Tanning. Uh, they they supply us and our uh, district leather supply in Atlanta. I have a southwestern suede in the sneaker industry. We like to call this elephant print. Yeah. So, so this is a gold lux. I was gonna uh, say it's print. a gold one. Yeah. Uh, this is a cream suede with the gold embossed elephant print on there. We also have that in a a baby blue. Then over oh, wow. then over here we have let's see I have some leopard. Uh, hair on, and uh, we call it hair on because the hair is still on the leather. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Texture. And then, and then uh, we have a, a a selection of. I have. I love. I'm in love with suede. So I have like a lot of grays and reds. Suede. This suede is the most beautiful. You can see the finger test where you can. Oh wow, yeah. that's smooth. And it's and it's completely water resistant. That look at this turquoise. Wow. Those are beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, we we uh we use a lot of suede on our looks. So uh, it's just something about it. I think it was a, a leather that got uh kind of lost. A lot of people get use like the the alligators and the, the different stuff like that. But I think suede is just just beautiful. Okay. And then can you take us like a day by day with you as far as designing and uh, constructing the shoe? Like how long does that take? Uh, constructing a shoe usually takes about two to three days. So the, the first process you would do is you would get up and you would um you would take a shoe like this mm -hmm. and you would you would take off the stitching out of the sole. And then you could either, depending on if you want to save the upper of the shoe, you could use uh steam to remove the sole. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you're not worried about the upper, you can use acetone to take the sole off because this sole is completely rubber. So you would remove, you remove the sole, and then once you remove the sole, then you would have, it would look more like this. This is an Air Max sole that's been removed. Look, I have one downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> like, crazy. So once, you, 
So once you remove this, you would uh you would take a uh, like a Dremel sander tool, and you would clean all the glue off, all the excess glue that you had on there to clean that up. And then um this is called a last. And so this is basically what structures every shoe. So as you can see, this fits perfectly into there. Yeah. So this is the Air Max One last. So basically, when you're making your shoe, once you've made the shoe, you will, you will nail it to the back right here. Mm -hmm. And then you will stretch the leather over the shoe to, uh, to create the structure of the shoe. So does and that that size you have is that that's just one size and you have to get those in different sizes? Correct. You would have to have this for every uh, every size, even half sizes for uh, each oh. shoe. So, like, say you do an Air Max One, basically you would have to have an Air Max One last in each size. Then you'd have to have a Jordan One last in each size. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's this is the most important part. Basically, this is. This is what you need to make any shoe. You can you can create your own patterns, but you need this and to match the sole. Once you have those two components, you can pretty much make whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. And so then after that, you would you would take a pattern. Hold on. And after you have a pattern, you will cut you some pieces. This is some new uh, floral leather that I got from District Leather Supply. Nice. Yeah, yeah, this is real beautiful. These are some pieces that you can just cut your pieces with your pattern. And then you would need, hold on, take over here. I'm sorry, my shop's a little dirty. <laughs> real work, real action going on. Yeah. So this is a sewing machine that you would need. Uh, this is an Artesian 4810. Uh, what makes this uh, special is that it has a roller wheel. I'm going to try to take you in there and see you. It doesn't have a walk. It doesn't have a walking foot like a traditional. Yeah. Yes. This this is a roller foot. So this is made for shoemaking, and this is what you call a post bed sewing machine. The needle, the bobbin is up, uh, off the table. So this is made strictly for uh, sewing sneakers and sewing shoes. Wow. Yeah. So that, that once I get up and I start doing that, then um, that's that's the biggest process is like sewing the shoe together. That's like usually your your day one. Your day one is like sewing the shoe together. And then um, day two, you would probably uh, do the lasting. And once you last, uh, like I said, you basically nail that on there. Um, you use pinchers like this mm -hmm. to pull your leather. And basically oh. what, what you do is you use this as a leverage. And so you will grab the leather. Or you'll, I'll show you what the last... When you grab the leather, you use it as like leverage and you, oh, you cool. stretch it like that and yeah. you pull it over and then you nail it. You'd nail it to the bottom of this. Oh. Yeah. And that's how you structure the shoe. And then um, then when you sew them, uh, you use a special type of glue called Renier mm -hmm. and um, you have to heat activate it. So you put it in an oven uh, for about two minutes to heat activate it. And then you, it's, kind of, it's, it's a little tricky, but yeah, you pretty much apply the sole. Yeah. And how long did it take you to learn this? Like, Well, as far as uh, sneakers, uh, the class that I took, I took the shoe surgeon class in Los Angeles. It was a four day class. So but they also kind of like run you through it. It's 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 like since it's in a weekend, they, they're kind of like on a time schedule. So you, you pick up the class, but um, it, it, you need some refresher. But luckily, uh, the head instructor, me and him have built a rapport. And so I've been touching back and forth with him. And he's also been working with me on shoes. Oh, cool! That's yeah, we got cool. some. We got some really cool stuff. Uh, our first collection, we tried to do like a, a kind of like a pay homage to different uh, leather working stuff. Like we did some wingtip Jordans and stuff like that. Nice. And is so. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. Was that all of the process? That's yeah, yeah. It's so you sew it, you last it, and then you sew it. Yep, that's pretty much. So right. is, it, is it tedious when you're like pulling the fabric and having to stitch it? Because once it's Nailed on there, that's what you're stitching? Well, no, once it's stitched and you nail it to this last, uh, basically, um, I wish I had some. I'm not. Hold on. Give me give me one second. I'll show you. Okay. Like, so basically, when you're working on the shoe, your shoe is your shoe is flat. Oh, okay. So, so once you, then once you like, I'll show you. To, uh, once you have it, 
You see, it will it will sit on this last. Hold on, I'll show you. See, it goes around the last, mm -hmm. and then you will have this excess on the bottom. And basically, what you're doing is you're pulling that over. Oh, and that's what I'm that's what structures that's right. what structures it. Oh, yeah, and then you'll have a board down here. That's a, called a lasting board. If you've ever taken the insole out of your Nikes and you look in there in the bottom and you see all these like stitches going around yeah, the edge. Yeah, I can that see them look right here. Yeah, that, that white piece that's attached to the bottom of your uh, shoe is called a lasting board. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nike uh, Nike quit lasting their shoes because it's, it's a waste of, you know, obviously you're stretching that material and that the material that you stretch on the bottom, you you cut it off mm -hmm. once you stretched it. And so they use it, it's a waste. So now they've done it where they basically go around and stitch the edge now. So so they, mm -hmm. they don't do it the traditional way anymore. But yeah, that's basically what that is on the bottom of your shoe. That's a lasting board. That's so interesting. It seems like I've been able to see my shoes just because, um, you know, they've been falling apart. But I'll tell you this, and maybe you can give a few uh, shoe lovers and sneakerheads some tips on how to keep their sneakers. Do not keep them in the garage. Um, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be crazy, but the best thing you can do for your sneakers is wear them. The le the le so your, your sole is uh, used with a contact cement. So basically, this glue only sticks to itself. So the more you push it together, the stronger it becomes. So when you don't wear your shoes, it's kind of like the adverse effect. It's, it starts to it starts to uh, come apart. And the foam, if the foam doesn't stretch, it will also become brittle. So the best thing you can do is wear your shoes. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. I'm actually, I love to wear my shoes. Uh, but yeah. yeah, wear your shoes. Uh, there's these things that you can buy from a, uh, I think you can get them from like Foot Locker. They're called like Force Fields, I think. They go in the toe of your shoes. They're like foam. They keep your shoes from creasing. I'm also a big advocate of those. Yeah. I, I hate creases in my toe. It's one of the things. Yeah. I think I think it's kind of one of the reasons I got into making shoes because like after I wear them a couple times, I'm like, eh. and then I usually give them away like to like underprivileged kids. Like my shoes, I once I wear them a couple times, I usually give them away. But yeah, it's one of my biggest pet peeves is the creases in the toe. Yeah. And it's so interesting you say that, like giving them away, like I was looking to um, give a lot of my shoes away. And then I was like, well, let me wear them real quick. And then I found myself wearing them. And I like this happened while I was walking. <laughs> and I was like, but before it looked like this, it was like completely like this. So I couldn't even tell that this was going to happen. So yeah, it just snuck up on me. Unfortunately, it looks like some of the foam is ripped on there, but if it yeah. wouldn't, that could probably be re-glued. Um, we're actually in the process, hopefully going to try to open up a, a, a sneaker refurbish shop here yeah. in Nashville, where basically you could bring those to us and we would we would redo them. Oh, that would be dope. Yeah. And I know we talked about doing, you were like, you make them some wallets, make them some bags. I'm like, no, I want to wear my sneakers, but... One sneaker I did, uh, I was able to say was my Spizak because I did wear those a lot. My red, white, and blue ones, I wore those a lot. But speaking of sneakers, what are some of your favorites? Some of my favorite sneakers, um, I think the I think the Jordan One has become a classic. It's you know it's went from like a performance basketball shoe to more like a, a lifestyle sneaker, you know, and it, even almost they've even made it a little more dressier with because people are wearing them with suits and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but let me see. I don't know. I really like all sneakers. I, I have, I have everything from Vans to, you know, Chucks and Jordans. Um, one of the uh, sneakers that we're making is the easy one. And that's, uh, that's kind of big because that was a co-branded sneaker with Kanye West and Nike. And because they don't have a good relationship, this, uh, the shoe will never be retroed. They only made three colorways of that sneaker. And like the cheapest pair is like $5,000, but we're actually going to start, uh, we have got the last and, uh, stuff developed. So we're going to be able to start making the shoes. I'm pretty excited about that. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah, what did you think? Is that, what did you think about the, uh, Red October, the Yeezys? I liked them. I think, I think, you know, like, I think social media has hyped up sneakers a lot, you know, like, I mean, and then, and which I'm not mad about that. That's, that's good for business for me, but it's just like, it's kind of oversaturated it. So it's kind of like everything, you know, like, I think, I think the red Octobers 
the, those shoes, the design on them, it was really, really dope. Like I, I'm a big fan of design. They had these, um, they had these like molded backs on them. I could, I can't even really explain it, but it was like the leather was molded. You couldn't, it wasn't stitched. And, and so like, it was hard to emulate. Like people couldn't really do a lot of custom stuff yeah. with it. I like those a lot. Those, and then when he did the Louis Vuitton one, his sneaker, yeah. I really like those. Yeah. This is the pair. This is the pair we're doing. This is the uh, the Yeezy one. Yeah. We're gonna. With the gonna elephant. Yeah, we did it. Uh, we paid homage to the Cement Three, which yeah. is uh, where this uh, shoe came from, and so. Uh, we yeah we just basically paid homage to that. It's got a uh, it's got a suede tongue on it with 3M underneath the tongue. Uh, we went with lambs. We have lambskin lining inside of it. Oh nice. Our own branding. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're really excited about bringing this out. We're, we're actually the only ones in the world making these sneakers right now. Wow. And then speaking of that, so is there like a a conflict of interest when it comes to that? Like, are you like any infringements or trademarks or anything? Uh, I have a, I have an intellectual property lawyer, but um, it's kind of it's kind of weird with that. So if I was to try to produce this shoe, like go to a factory and get them to produce my own version, then I am in copyright infringements on the shoe. But when I take the shoe apart and I recraft it, then the patent for them doesn't hold because it's my craftsmanship of the sneaker. It's my leathers. It's, it's so it's kind of like a gray area when you recraft them. But like I said, right now we're just using this for familiarity to build our own brand, but we have some sneakers that's coming out real soon. It's like our own designs. Yeah. So it's just like, I, I think, but this is the, like I, I always tell my partner, I was like, "This is a uh, what the internet wants." <laughs> yeah, yep, it is. You, so you got to give is. them what they want to, you know, build it up. Like, like I said, I, oh, here I'll show you a couple of shoes that we got. So like, yeah. this is a shoe that um, it, all this all this leather on this shoe that we call these the jams and jellies. It's a a, a rich purple suede with lavender rough suede, and then we have a, a tumbled like lilac kind of leather right here. Mm -hmm. um, all the leather on this shoe was made from Tandy leather. So this is like one of the things we're going to do with Tandy is uh, Tandy's trying to uh, do it like it's an initiative where they uh, they feel like they're like the old man wallets and, you know, that type of stuff. They want to get and back in touch with the, the youth. So we're going to show them like, hey, you can go to Tandy Leather and get all the leathers to make this shoe right here. That's cool. That stitching is really, really nice, too. Thank you. You did really good. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting better. It's, it's, it's very tricky doing the two lines like yeah. that. And then uh, here's another shoe that we're doing with Tandy Leather. This is one of the ones I was talking about. This is the wingtip, Jordan. Oh. Yeah, we put the, we got the tassels over the laces. This has um this has 100% leather laces on it. Uh, we went we went with a flannel inside. Nice. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, olive drab green uh, suede, and then this is a a paisley embossed veg tan leather. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. So it's got like Paisley and Boston. Yeah. It. Yeah, this is one of our this is one of our shoes that we're doing with Tandy as well. So like this is all all the leather on here it comes from Tandy leather. Like I said, I have other leather houses that we source from, but we're trying to do something with Tandy here in Nashville. So this is one of our shoes we're doing with that. I'll show you the last shoe that we're doing with them. This is this one's really cool. So this le this oh. one right here, this is actually pretty cool because this is a solid piece of leather. Um, we took it to one of the guys at Tandy and um. Um, for lack of a better term, it's carved, but the, the term in leather working is called tooling. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. he basically tooled all the lines in there. This is this is carved in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, the shoe. Well, that's why I have to compliment the stitching again, but wow. Nah, this, yeah, this is all like it's kind of an illusion. It's all tooled and carved in there. And mm -hmm. then uh, it has hand-stitched closures on it, hand-dyed yellow. Uh, we used a goat skin yellow in here. It's a deconstruct version. Nice. Yeah, these this is really cool. So this this shoe is really actually waterproof and some more stuff. Oh wow. So, is yeah, it really actually, soft? It looks really soft too. It is, it is. It's a real soft veg tan. Um the thing about sneakers is you don't use like a, a very thick leather, and these yeah. these have the gums, they also have the gum sold as well. Um, yeah, you don't use a very thick leather. So yeah, a lot of times the leathers tend to be softer. Uh, we look for softer leathers. Um, uh, most of the time uh, using calf is good because it's, it's a, um, it's a, it just tends to be softer. So that's what, that, that's what we're about is trying to use like luxury leathers and stuff. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And then uh, I guess too, what are the next thing? Well, well, I'll ask you this too, that wingtip one. 
what was the thought process um behind that and picking those exact colors too because i know they could have been any colors but those like go well especially with the detail with the inside of the flannel well i think i think the thing was uh since i know how to make wingtips mm -hmm. i felt this, uh, when I went to the shoe surgeon school in Los Angeles, I wanted to make a pair of wingtip Jordans there, but we were lack of time. So it's always kind of been a thing of mine to like do a pair of wingtips. So um, I use this uh, leather because that's that traditional penny loafer. Yeah. Just like, you know, like, I mean, you can see the burgundy kind of like popping up out of it now, yeah. but it's like, yeah, it's that traditional penny loafer. And then I I'm a fan of Paisley's. I love my two favorite prints are probably Paisley and Floral. So when I saw the Paisley Veg Tan, and it's 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 classic. Now I will say, hold on, I have another pair of wingtips that's a little bit more fun. These are our southwestern version. Oh, and that's what you use it. Wow. Yeah. So as you can see, like I even got orange. I put orange ribbon behind the, all the holes, so there's like a uh, like a cream sickle orange to match the sole. Mm -hmm. um, we use the southwestern suede on here which is beautiful. Um, these have uh, leather, red leather laces in them. We used a uh, pigskin suede lining inside. And I see a branding on there too, on the tongue. Yeah, it is Savant, yeah. And then this is um, what we call this is right here, is uh, the holes in there, that's called broguing. So mm -hmm. there's a special punch for that, as you can see like the, the, the uh, what you call the design in there. And then the, the jagged edge is called gimping. That jagged edge right there is called gimping. Now, unfortunately, there's a machine. Like, it kind of looks like a, a meat grinder that you run the edges of your leather through, and it, it gimps the shoes. But I haven't been able to find one. So, actually, each one of those uh, jagged edges was cut by hand. I cut all of them oh, by yeah. hand. Because I was going to say, too, that in sewing, you know, there's pink and shears that you can cut, and the, the scissors are already like that, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it probably wouldn't cut through leather. They don't have them that sharp, but... Okay. It's like that. Yeah, so I look so on eBay. I found one like a vintage one. I'm, I'm gonna try to get in touch with the guy and see if I can get it. But mm. excuse me, it's a very it's a very hard item to find because it comes from like a traditional like. Well, a lot of places just don't make shoes. They they repair them, but they don't make them. Yeah, yeah. So Because we used to, I I worked in in leather goods, and we would send handbags to shoemakers to fix. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have like handbag fixers they would just send them to the, the people who dealt with shoes yeah like i was explaining on that, that sewing machine earlier the post bed sewing machine that the the bobbin being up like that it allows you to like to put pieces over it and kind of like really like get in there and work so that's why once the, the bag and stuff has already been built it's easy to use those type of machines to fix them because they can get inside the bag without having to tear it apart cool. you know and then I guess, too, what else do you have coming up? Is there anything you want people to know? And um, I guess what would your advice be getting into the business and shoemaking and bag making and just con design and construction overall? Um, well, first, I would um, I think what may be uh, good at what I do is I took uh architectural like background in, in high school and stuff like that. So if you're like, you know, I think you should. You should definitely learn, the, if you're going to get into shoes, you definitely should learn the construction part because a lot of people can draw stuff up, but just because you draw it doesn't mean it can be made. And I know that sounds weird, but it's like, uh, like I learned that in the bag world. People used to send us bags. See, we did prototype work. So they would send us bags and they would make like a gusset that wouldn't, couldn't be made. And we would be like, oh, this bag can't even be made. So I think, you know, the best part is to learn the construction. Because once you learn the construction of anything, you can you can bend the rules. You know, it's like once you know like what what you can do, it's like you then you know how to bend it or change it to to your likings. So I would definitely like you say going into construction. Now, if you're gonna go into, you know, um bag construction, there's actually a lot of uh, really great bag makers in Nashville. Uh, you have, I know, Sari Hoover. I'm sure she's probably still making purses and stuff. She's awesome. Uh, Tucker and Bloom, they're awesome. You could go to some of these places and probably try to apprenticeship. Like I said, the best way to learn is to start at the bottom, and that's pattern making. Because pattern making is the most important part, you know, like knowing your seam allowances, your curves, and, and stuff like that. So, uh, I would say learn learn the pattern making part, then the construction. Uh, when I went to school at, uh, in Oregon to learn how to make dress shoes, I literally was in in class with the head designer for Tory Burch because he knew how to design, but he didn't know how to make them. 
And so he wanted to learn how to make them. So that's why I say I think anybody who's in it, you should learn the construction part. And then um, uh, let's see, I don't know. Shoes, uh it's a, it's 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 gonna be a um it's gonna be a tough road in Nashville. There's not like I said, it's just resources. It's just resources. We're getting them, we're getting them, but I think you know, like you LA is more of a uh like a base for that. So it's just like I don't know. That's what, but that's what we're trying to do here in Nashville. Like, is bring. Uh, I've been working with District Leather Supply in Atlanta to try to supply leather. Uh, we're even t- talking about maybe even starting a small school. Oh, that would be really cool. Yeah, because the lack of them. Like, I mean, on this side of the country, your your shoemakers. Well, I say shoemakers. I'm, I'm not going to uh, generalize that, but sneaker recrafting or sneaker customizers. You have some in Miami and you have some in New York, but yeah. you know, not even not even really big in Atlanta like it should be, and, and not here now. What I'd like to do here is I'd like to try to mix like with these the the tooling ones. I'd like to mix like this is more traditional with boot making. And, and and saddles and stuff like that. So I'd like to try to you know mix that. Um, I've, I've, uh, some bootmakers have reached out to me about just different techniques. Uh, one of them, he had actually made the sole leather, and I was very intrigued by that. I would love to learn how to make leather soles for Jordans. I think that'd be really cool. So, um, but yeah, no, like I said, I think the biggest thing is just learning construction. That that's the main part. Like you know, trust the process. Learn you know learn the craft. You know put in the time i think it's like what they say uh, to be a master you gotta put in like ten thousand hours worth of work you know what i'm saying so just you know putting in the work you know the uh, shorten the gap between uh what you want it to look like and what it's actually look like you know so yeah all right and then anything else you want everybody to know um well we, we are our website will be up soon um it is savant.c i mean it is savantcs.com um other than that no i mean we, we might be planning another pop-up um let's see we got some, we got some things in the works i can't really talk about right now we're doing a couple of collaboration projects that i think is gonna uh be big i got a, a interview with the national scene coming out in about a week so i'm excited about that uh just just some stuff like that i think i, I think you, you guys are gonna see us a little bit more yeah cool and then um have you heard a lot of people creating and selling digital shoes like nfts and different things uh it's funny you should mention that because uh we're actually about to open up a digital sneaker boutique um the my partner who helps me with the sneakers his wife uh is in la she spearheads um Meta human. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Meta human, but it's basically uh, cloning yourself digitally. She is uh, the one who was responsible who made the uh, Tupac hologram at Coachella. She's the one who did that. So basically, um, there are people are making their own version, digital versions of their self uh, that they can implement into movies, into games. Well, obviously, if you make a digital version of yourself, you're going to want digital sneakers to wear. So yeah, we're actually uh, tapping into the Meta human. Uh, aspect where we're going to be selling like a we're going to actually have like a uh, like a meta human stock x basically where you can come Ooh. and buy any type of sneakers yeah but the cool part about this is now with the digital world you're not you're not limiting yourself to just like them being sneakers they could be they could fly they could light up they can you know they could just be on fire there's like a million things now with that so i think it's going to be like it's going to open up a big market uh and just to let you know like that's not too far ahead of the curve uh jeff staple literally just released a meta human sneaker about a month ago one sneaker sold for ninety thousand dollars wow so so there's there's gonna be a probably more of a market for that you know like uh than the almost regular sneakers because it's good a lot of stuff is going digital and so, but now the crazy part is to make those digital sneakers, to make them like realistic, you literally have to make them like you have to make a digital last. You have to like mm-hmm. digitally sew them. It's, 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 it's a crazy process, but um, yeah, we're, um, there's another artist named Freehand Profit that we're collaborating with. He'll be out here in a couple months uh, to do a project that we're doing. He takes uh, high end sneakers and chops them up and makes them into these like uh, luxury gas masks. Yeah, and, you were telling me about that. Yeah, that yeah, we got, yeah, got something really cool with him. Uh, he's gonna take, he's actually gonna take a pair of our Yeezys and chop them up and make them into some gas mask. Um, uh, it's gonna, it's, yeah, it's really cool. But he's the one spearheading our uh, our digital sneakers. So yeah, I think I think it's actually gonna be a wave. Like they just put the Lebrons on uh, from Space Jam on like Fortnite, I think, or something like that. So like you're seeing it implemented more. 
Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to, I think like the next couple of years, you're going to like, it's going to be a big, big thing. Oh, cool. And then are you, are you going to teach any classes or accepting any interns or apprentices? Yes, once we get everything going, probably the next couple months. Yeah, we. Uh, I would love, I would absolutely love to find a couple, <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be a, a boy or girl because I've been seeing a lot of women getting into the uh, like the actual making of sneakers. Mm-hmm. And a uh, matter of fact, a friend of mine, his daughter, uh, I mean not daughter, but uh, niece went to the same school I went to in L- LA and they have a contest where they like they vote for the sneaker out of the class yeah. it's the best or whatever and she actually won and so that's what I'm saying so I'm seeing more women get into it but I'd love to find a, a couple like I say I, I say 24 25 year olds that could get into it you know I'm I'm older so I, I learned later in life but I think if like you can find some people that were like highly motivated kind of like a little bit more mature like where they didn't they knew what they wanted in life it's um it's a passion job you know what I'm saying like it's it's something that you have to really I I can teach you how to make shoes I can't teach you how to be passionate yeah you know, so so it's one of them things because the more passionate you are about it, like the more serious you'll take it, and then you'll put out like great work. But it's it's very. I mean, it's for kids. I mean, you think about it like the option when I was when I was these kids' age, I, I didn't have the option of like, hey, you can make sneakers and make a living. You know, like I remember when I was painting sneakers and I was like 24 and I was like, hey, these sneakers are two hundred dollars. They were like two hundred dollars. That's crazy. And now you you can't hardly get a pair of sneakers for two hundred dollars. Yeah. So, like, I think, you know, with the, the social media and stuff like that, you know, realistically, a, a guy, um, the Jordan 1 is the only sneaker that you can make on a flatbed sewing machine. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, I mean, a kid could go get him a nice flatbed sewing machine from a pawn shop, some materials, and then, you know, say, last last aren't very expensive. Uh, they're about $150 a set. Mm-hmm. So, if you, like, you figure, like, save up a couple hundred dollars, he could start making sneakers. You know, and that's like, yeah, I would definitely like to teach that. Uh, my partner, uh, his name is Neil Cairo. He's uh, based in L.A. He does a lot of the research and design for Idiot Savant. We're trying, you know, touching the more shoes. We're doing some custom Pumas coming up for uh, Jay-Z and them. So, like, we got some stuff we're doing. But um, he's he actually teaches a school now for the shoe surgeon. But he's, he's talking about starting his own school. And we're talking about opening up a, a division out here. So, yeah, that's another thing that we're trying to work out with Tandy. We'd like to do a school with Tandy Leather. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd yeah, be nice. It, it would make sense, you know? Yeah. It would make sense. I would I'd like to implement it in this, you know, uh, we had a, a, a after-school program that we were trying to start called uh, Paint Progressive Art in Nashville, Tennessee. And we were trying to teach kids – like more art that is like sellable, like, mm-hmm. and, and you mentioned on NFTs and I know we're getting a kind of way from sneakers, but NFTs, I feel like is the future, not necessarily per se NFT, but digital art is the future. Yeah. You know, I, I really see it. Like, you know, I don't, I, I say it all the time. People disagree with me, but I say canvas is dead because it's, you know, so, and so that's why I want to teach these kids. I want to teach them like, Hey, I'm going to teach you how to screen print t-shirts. So you can make your own t-shirts and you can sell them. You can be profitable already. You know, I'm going to teach you how to make your own shoes. I'm going to teach you how to do maybe photography. You know what I'm saying? Like the arts that you would, that me and you both know people that ho- have whole livings doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it sounds like media, you need to be in Tennessee craft. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like, it. I mean, I mean, let's, I, I want to do it. I, I really want to, I could have left Nashville. I, I could have left Nashville a long time ago, but I really want some things to come here. And so I, I want to be the one to kind of maybe spearhead that. Like, like I said, shoes, like you think about it, I make shoes from scratch, but who's the next person behind me? Like who's the person that's painting sneakers? Who like, you know, is yeah. that? And, and we don't really know any, I don't. And I, and I, and I'm pretty, you know, I, I try to stay in the know of that thing. And so that's the, that's the problem I, I see is like, there should be somebody right on my heels. There should be somebody like right behind me, you know, like yeah. that's, that's what I want, you know? And I, I think, I think the hardest part is just getting them pa- past the fact that they know that they can make them like, Hey, let yeah. me teach you, that's you know, like, and in and in, 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 in everyone's defense too as, as well, uh the guy who, who taught me how to make dress shoes, he said the number one thing that detours people from making sneakers is the sewing machine. He said when you hit a sewing machine, it you know, it takes off, it goes so fast, and it intimidates you. 
And he was like, you know, so I think, you know, getting people past that, like, Hey, look, you can do this, you know, like you can make this. And, and that's what I try to show them. Like, like the, that's why I was getting back to the familiarity of them is like, you know, I could go in there and I could show a kid, Hey, I made my own sneakers. And if they don't like the sneaker that they might not gravitate to the idea that they can make sneakers. But if I go in there and I say, Hey man, I made some Yeezys. Then they're like, oh, and it's like yeah. you got their attention. And then it's like, well, then once I tell you you can make Yeezys, I tell you that you can also make your own shoes, mm -hmm. you know. But like I said, it's a, it's 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 um, and you know this because you're in like marketing stuff. The familiarity of sometimes of people. That's what. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, Nike just passed a, a got a patent on their on the Jordan One, and um, I'll kind of show you with this shoe with what that means. So when you get a design patent, a design patent on a sneaker means there is a silhouette. Is the outline of the shoe. This entire thing would be black in the design patent. Well, there's another ver version of uh, patent, uh, patent and trademarking called uh, trade dress. Now, trade dress is where um, a certain amount of colors, a certain way of colors. It means it's like a, it's basically trademark. And I'll give you an example. It's like a red and green stripe. You immediately think Gucci. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's called trade dress. And Gucci has that red and green stripe trade dress. So you can't use a red and green stripe like that or whatever. So anyway, what they did was they got a trade dress where you can't lay these patterns. These leather pieces of leather can't lay on each other the same way. You can't use certain combos. So now, yeah, so now these companies that you've seen that have been producing this shoe, but they changed the Nike sign to yeah. their own Nike sign. Yeah, they can't do that anymore. See, and that's the first time that's ever happened. That's called a trade dress a patent. So yeah. that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, so that's why I said you, you, um, they knew the familiarity of that shoe is what mm -hmm. people was drawing people to other businesses. So they tried to, they tried to stop that. Yeah, they passed that on the Jordan One and the Air Force One. Wow. So like all these vapes and and these other companies that you see, you probably start seeing less of that. I do, and I do see less of them. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and then so, tell us, when is the next pop up shop? Uh, I think we're playing one for about a month. So we have a um, uh, uh, we have a kind of like a, I don't want to say a hidden space that we have mm -hmm. been developing, and mm -hmm. that's where we've been doing it at. So I think we're gonna do another one because we've added some stuff to the space, and and we're gonna have some more shoes. So probably about another month or so. Yeah, like mm -hmm. probably end of August. Okay, we'll, we'll make sure we keep our members updated too. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah, come on out. And like I said, we, well, we're well, we going to do a lot of cool stuff. We're going to have the guy that uh, tools the leather come out and tool some live. We're going to, like, you know, let's start adding in different aspects. Because like you said, we, we definitely like to bring some, uh, you know, kids involved and start getting them, like, you know, because I think sneakers is the most uh, – let me put – I don't want to put this. It's, it's colorblind. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got black, white, Asian. I mean, there's kids all over the world, man. Everybody loves sneakers, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like the secret society. Like, when you see someone with them, you're like, oh, like, you know, if they got on a certain pair of sneakers, yeah. they think like you or y'all have some type of similarities. It's a, it's the biggest form of self-expression. And, mm -hmm. and if you're a child and, you know, and I mean, I say this because I have a child, at times kids can be cruel. And I think it's the biggest confidence builder. You know, like, like there's, there's, this, this is a one-on-one -one shoe. There's no other shoe like this in the world. And this is, the, this is like I said, this shoe is a $5,000 shoe if it's anywhere. So if I put this on a kid's foot and let him go to high school tomorrow, even if he's the most unpopular kid in the school, he's going to feel really great about himself, to, you know, when he leaves tomorrow. And, and that's, and if you can give that away in fashion, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see, you know, and I'm not like trying to hate anything, but I don't see many shirts or hats or anything doing that. You know, it's like shoes. It's, it's just, it's something really special about sneakers, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, all right, Josh. I thank you for your time today. And thank you for educating us on shoe making and designing and even the business side of it, which was even more extraordinary. But thank you for your time today. Oh, uh, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. And let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, my my ins personal Instagram is I Dream in Blu-ray, all one word, uh, spelled just like it sounds. And uh, the company is idiot .c idiotsavant.cs on Instagram. Yeah, check us out. We're going to be we're dropping a lot of stuff. Uh, we've been doing some really cool stop motion videos that we're going to be doing. Like, we're just going to be trying to make it fun again. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. See you, Josh. Bye-bye.